Hey finger freaks, my name's Jess and I'm back with another gloving video, this time aimed at the newbies to the gloving community. This video is going to cover all the things that I wish someone told me back when I first started gloving. I'll try to cover everything from technology to taboos, but not in too much depth because we don't want this to be a 4 hour video. The first and most important thing to think about when you start gloving is that this hobby is about having fun. No matter what community you look at, be it hobbies, fandoms, associations, or religions, politics and drama and general human toxicity will be found. This is the reality of societies built out of individuals with different motivations, traumas, experiences, and backgrounds. However, don't let this fact of life detract from the creative fun that comes along with the gloving journey. It's important to remember that people have different measures of fun. Some people find fun in the dabbling of art without parameters of technique or the responsibilities of skill. That's okay. On the other hand, some people find their fun in the journey of learning and perfecting a talent or a technique. That's okay too. Neither of these groups should fall into the ego trap of thinking that their version of fun is somehow morally superior to the other. As long as both groups are having fun, that's what counts. The next thing to think about is the technology. I'm going to say this loudly, with enthusiasm. Technology does not perfect technique for you. One of the only things that will actually affect your light show techniques are the size of the lights themselves, not necessarily the quality of the brand. The reason for this is based in physical therapy and exercise science. Think medicine balls used in the gym, or a baseball player using donuts around their bats. The reason for this is to apply more weight to the range of motion than is actually necessary for the actual function, so that when the time comes to perform, the athlete is used to more resistance. In gloving, the extra weight applied to the hands via the lights and the gloves themselves is enough of resistance to create a better dexterity than the average finger stylist. On the other hand, the actual flash patterns can affect the overall appearance of the techniques displayed as well. This manifests in the gaps in color. Essentially, the longer those gaps in color, the more easily sloppy technique can be hidden. Pure ribbons with no gaps will critique all unwarranted movement to the point where they can be considered gloving on hard mode. Those are the only two ways technology really affects your light show. The size of the light and the flashing pattern used. Other than that, choose based on functionality and what your preferences are. If you still don't know what you really want out of a light or what to look for, see my Before You Buy Glow Gloves video, which should clear up some confusion about what kind of lights you can find on the market. Gloving is a hobby built around electronic music culture. Its existence is dependent on the subculture's interpersonal engagements. For this reason, gloving was born and raised around the music community and tends to wax and wane with live events. Coronavirus certainly had a detriment to the interpersonal aspect of gloving, much like every other aspect of life. Like everything else, gloving retreated to the internet, where social media groups and hashtag gloving has had a presence since its inception in 2008. Groups like Glover's Lounge on Facebook and Worldwide Glovers on Discord are helping to maintain the culture in these trying times, but inevitably the Pangeo will end and the people will be throwing lights to live music again. When that happens, there are a few gloving taboos to avoid if you've never experienced a gloving trade before. So this is Trading Light Shows 101. Trading Light Shows is the act of giving and receiving a gloving light show. The trade is initiated much like a Pokemon battle. Two glovers will lock eyes and the ritual will begin. When deciding who goes first, there's usually a mental calculus that occurs between the two glovers. That calculus is in regards to who is more intimidated of the other. While gloving is a fun, carefree hobby at its core, it still takes a bit of courage to be face to face with another living, breathing person who is going to, whether subconsciously or vocally, critique the ever-living shit out of every movement. For this reason, the person who is deemed more talented or at least more intimidating is selected to go last so that the less confident person doesn't get overwhelmed by the first half of the trade. The length of each show should default to around 90 seconds to 150 seconds, around two and a half minutes, unless explicitly discussed. 
This allows for a full song per person or two to three drops slash breakdowns during a live music event. The reason for this is based on the attention span and respect for people's time. Particularly at a music event, people might not want to spend more than five minutes on the whole trade encounter, whether it's because they are maximizing the trades with the Glovers at the festival or, or they're trying to make it to the next stage or whatever. It's important etiquette to respect people's time. Finally, there are a few taboos to consider in the gloving world. The first is the taboo against what's known as diffraction glasses. Oh no, God! No, God, please, no! These are special eyewear with the shapes and prisms cut into them that create fractal patterns out of light. There are many different kinds, some expensive, some cheap as hell. To most glovers, these are a huge no-no. They often take away any capacity to see what the light show techniques are happening or see whatsoever. The effect is essentially a flashy kaleidoscope, which diminishes the point of the experience in the first place. There is, however, one kind of brave eyewear that doesn't follow this rule, and that's chroma depth glasses. These are a special 3D type of glasses that spread out the light waves and put specific colors at specific depths of field very crazy effect that doesn't cause any detrimental visual clutter. The other main taboo is what's essentially called the unwelcomed double. This is where a second performer will join in on a first performer's light show unannounced. While double team light shows can be very fun and exciting for the viewer, they are best left to be planned out by double partners. If you are at an event and see someone giving a light show and you do not know them, it is absolutely unacceptable to come up behind them and add your lights to the performance. It's an encroachment of space and very disrespectful to the Glover in progress. If you want to make a new friend and do a double team light show with them, trade first and then ask to perform together. This will prove that you respect them and the culture. Gloving is nearly 20 years old now. In its two decades of growth, many different gloving innovators have made their mark on the culture in some capacity. Whether it's their contribution to the technique meta, their physical contribution to the technology, or their capacity to grow the culture itself in some way. It's hugely important to remember these pioneers and their contributions to the culture. Fortunately to these OGs, we've got something for this. YouGotMoves.com built a directory of tutorials on the techniques that are prevalent in the community which of course means the pioneers will live on in a way that will provide knowledge to generations of glovers to come. And of course, there is my book, Mastering the Art of Gloving, The Literal Handbook. This book is the most comprehensive guide to the art of gloving and includes every aspect of history, culture, technique, and theory of gloving light shows. This book will provide gloving a leg to stand on in the literary world and cement its place in art history forever. Supporting this channel can be free with likes and subs. If you want to do more to help, check out yougotmoves.com backslash handbook. That's yougotmoves.com backslash handbook to purchase my book. Huge bless to everyone who has already had their copy. The first run of 500 is almost sold out. Happy gloving, finger freaks, and remember it's better to be weird than boring.